basically, I've been doing a lot of studying up on space, right? That's what we've been talking about. Space. Who? Why? <laughs> All right, so I've been talking about, we've been thinking about space. I've been digging into it. All right, so how much do y'all think you would cost somebody like me? All right, let me back up a little bit. Who in here is 10 years old? <laughs> 10 years old. Carson's newly 11, weirdo. You're almost 12. You don't look a day over 10. Not a day. Yeah. So, think about how long your life has been. 10 years. Think back over your whole life. 10 years. And they're talking like in 10 years that you're going to be able to do a mission to Mars. A one-man mission to Mars in 10 years. Yes. Who would want to go to Mars? You want to go to Mars? You want, all right. Do you know how much it costs to go to Mars? Millions or billions? Billions. 3.8 billion to do a solo mission to Mars. 3.8 billion. 3.8 billion. 3 .8 billion. 3 .8 billion. Who's kind of got that money? Me. <laughs> I had $3 the other day. That's, yeah, that's it. So, that's a little expensive for my taste. So, what I did, I went to the supermarket, right? I took about $38 instead of $3.8, $3.8 billion. And I bought some stuff from the supermarket that's kind of going to be like food and stuff on Mars, right? So, who wants to play a game called Black Hole? Me! Alright, let's see. Right here, Addison, let's go. Let me get one guy. Silas, let's do it, baby. Rise up! Hey, don't forget my love. Y'all work out this stuff in. Alright, there we go. Silas, you ready? Alright, so we're going to play a little game called Black Hole. So let's get blindfolded. Or turtle. Maybe something really nasty. Hold up. 
boys when they're about to fall. I'm asking you, do y'all want to try? Do y'all want to try to guess, or do you want to pass it to the boys? Don't pass it to the boys. There ain't one girl. Come on, ask. Come on. Do you feel nervous? Mm -hmm. You got a lot of nervous. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of I was like, oh, 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 Smoothies and pineapple willies. I always get the ribs. All right, here we go. He's about to, about to, this is the last one. It's all in. If she gets it, the girls win. If she misses, the boys win. All right? Here we go. Yeah, all right, here we go. All right, show, show them what it is. Show them what show the crowd what it is. Oh, Science. I like doing experiments and labs. You know what I mean? I kind of like doing stuff, right? So what we got up here today, we're actually going to do a little little experiment. Y'all with that? Yeah. yeah, I got a little lab code here. We're going to be real scientists, right? All right. We need one person. we got to be extremely responsible. You can know, get a little out of hand fast. Right? And, uh, Taylor, how about you? There you go. Alright, so here's, here's what's going to happen in this experiment. I, so I'm not going to tell you exactly what's going to happen, alright? But I am going to give you directions of what to do. Okay, so you, all you got to do is follow my um, is follow my directions and you'll be fine. Alright, so I'm going to, I have some calculations here that, you know, I've been, I've been staying up late nights figuring out. Alright, so I just want you to listen, okay? L listen very closely because this is very important. You do not want to miss this, alright? You see object A? Here, pick up object A and show everybody object A. Alright? Object A is a plastic bottle. Alright? Also known as, you know, scientifically, I'm going to give you a little bit in depth thing right here. So, object A, as you can see, is your typical poly, poly stream bottle used for liquid storage and transportation. Can you pick up object B, please? You want to put object A back down? Where is B? Uh, actually, B is on the way. Let's go ahead and get C. Alright, so object C, go ahead and pick that up. 
right, which is a container housing roughly one tablespoon of Saccharomyces cerevis. Uh, it's commonly used in baking practices and it's surprisingly a volatile substance, you know, so that's pretty simple. I know you probably know that, so you can go ahead and put that down. Go ahead and pick up D real quick. And D, of course, I mean, I know you know this is, is hydrogen peroxide stored in a customary brown bottle. It's regularly used as a disinfectant. All right, so you can go ahead and put that one down. Uh, there's object E up there. Yeah, you can go ahead and pick up that one. So object E is a small amount of compounds comprised of carotenoids, chlorophyll, anti-sinusin, and uh, turmeric. So that's, you know, that's, that's another pretty simple one, pretty easy. I'm sure you all learned this you know, uh, in kindergarten no. science class. All right, so object F, you pick up that one. Okay, so this one's a little bit different. Object F is pure poison. Oh. No, I'm kidding. It's not. It's not. It's not. <laughs> All right, so object F is, but it is different than the other ones. It's made mostly of surf, surfactants, preservatives, fragrances, and a uh, little bit of stuff made in E. All right, can you go ahead and pick up B for me? Because I know B was. Yeah, get the gloves on. Get, yeah. Get them on clothes. Yeah, get those gloves on real quick before we start. Um, that one right there. Yeah. All right, so you got put those gloves on. And the next one we got right here, you got it. It's B. Alright, B. So B is you know it's just normal, it's just normal warm water. Okay, so we, we didn't want it too hot. It's just it's warm enough to uh, get what we're trying to do. Alright, so I do need you to be pretty careful because you know this is some of this can get hot and it can can hurt you, but you're gonna be fine, alright? So first I'm gonna read this off to you, okay? I want you to follow exactly exactly as I say. Alright, take object A, big bottle, alright? And hold it steady. So hold it, put it back in there, hold it, hold it good. As you carefully pour object F, you know the thing I joked about as being the poison? Yeah, it's not real poison. So carefully pour that in there. Don't use too much, just, just, like, a, just like a little bit. Don't shake, man. Good, good. That's good. Perfect. Good job. All right, once you've done that, take the cochegial extract, object E. Pour it into object A. No, no, yeah. Oh, that's you right, you're right, buddy. Add one. Good. Perfect. Alright, you good so far? Alright, so next you're going to take one half the cup of object D. Alright, see that? Stuff looks like milk, I promise you it's not milk. Alright, be careful pouring this stuff in. Pour about a half of, half of that cup in. Yeah. Alright, so now now you're not gonna worry about object A right here. We're gonna do something a little bit different. So I should take the Saccharomyces cerevisi in the context of C, object C, so go ahead and get that and carefully, I mean very, 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 very carefully pour some of that into object B, okay? Very careful. Yes, very extremely careful. Extreme caution. Watch the second explodes. It's an experiment. You gotta watch. Huh? All right. That should be good. All right. Go ahead and put the top on. This one here. So we're gonna kind of kind of mix that up a little bit. I know that. All right. Well, that'll be fine. All right, so we're going to take that back off. Kind of stick that knife in there to kind of get that, get that kind of, I don't know, separate a little bit. All right, good, good. All right, now, assuming we've done everything else right, I want you to do, I want you to listen first before you do it. Take what's in object B and pour it in the object A, all right? Ready? And what you do, step back, because it might, Fizz up. Alright, now stand back. Make it close. Just getting up there. Just getting up there. Yeah, we should see it. Woo! Ah! Ah! Swirl it. Swirl it like like that. Around, around. Swirl it like tea. Okay. <laughs> wow. Oh. Oh. 
Try adding a little bit more of the white stuff. Try adding a little more of the white stuff. You can use all that. Use all of it. All of it. Use all of it. Oh, is that? Oh, there you go. Uh oh. Sword rising. Oh no. You knew all that stuff? Okay, you're, you're just extremely smart. So, I know for me, when I'm sitting in science class and my teacher starts rambling on about a bunch of different chemicals, I'm pretty confused. And a lot of times I don't exactly know what to do. So, have y'all ever been in one of those situations where a leader or someone that you know is in charge is telling you what to do, telling you what to do in a certain situation, and you know you should follow it? But you're a little, I mean, you don't really understand what's going on, you're a little uncertain, and you're kind of scared of the end result. You ever had a situation like that? Yeah. Yeah. All right, one thing, I know mean, this is kind of very different from science. I think of when I'm practicing football, there's a lot of different things I can take in football that relate back to this. And that's the same thing with anything that you do. So after practice and during the summer, my coach, he, went into, he came up to us and told us, all right, we just had a really long day of practice. It was really hard. Now what I want y'all to do is I want you to go to the bleachers and I want you to run up them 20 times. And we were like, we were like what? But what is that going to do? We did not want to do that. And we were, we were confused. We were like, I really do not want to do that. I don't understand how this is going to help me. And so we didn't really understand that was going on, but we did them. And we did them many times. And what that, what that did, what running up those steps did was it really helped us now during the season it helped us get acclimated all right it helped us keep from getting exhausted on friday nights we were able to run more and more and more because of what we did so we had to put faith in our coach that he was what he was telling us was true another example is is when you clean up your room when your parents are telling you to clean up your room like, i don't want to clean up my room what's that going to do i don't understand how this is helping me what that's doing is that's creating you, you're creating responsibility. You're learning how to do things. All right, and everyone, what's y'all's favorite type of like dessert? Ice cream, what was yours? Sometimes ice cream. Sometimes ice cream. Yeah, what over here? What's y'all's favorite dessert? Y'all can eat it forever. What, cookies, brownies? Jello. Jello, okay. Brownies. Right, so for me, for me it's brownies. All right, so I can literally eat brownies until I die. I I'm making some. So, so when I'm when I'm eating brownies and I've already eaten about eight brownies, my mom, my mom's like, Steve, you gotta stop eating brownies." Well, especially when I was a lot younger, I was like, "Mom, I don't understand. Why can't, why do I have to stop eating brownies?" That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense to me. I want to eat as much brownies as I want. But I knew my mom was in charge, and I knew that she knew, knew better. And so, as I got older, I started to listen to her. I stopped eating the brownies. But what would happen if I just kept on, kept on, kept on eating the brownies? Yes, yes. yes cavities. I would feel sick. Would get exactly. Yes, I would get unhealthy. All right. So what I'm trying to say is a lot of times we have to put our faith in our, in our teachers, right? even, even in our leaders, in our parents. Even when we don't really understand what the end result is going to be. But I admit, sometimes it's really hard. When we can't see the end result, oftentimes we're, you know, we're faced with uncertainty. All right, so we're going to talk about a dude in, this, in the book of Genesis. We've been in the book of Genesis for two, for two weeks now. What do y'all know about the book of Genesis? It's the first book in the Bible. It's the first book of the Bible. Good. All right, so two weeks ago we learned about Adam and Eve. Last week, what did we learn about last week? Y'all remember? Great flood, Noah. Yeah, that's, a, that's a great story. 
Uh, so we're going to look at someone who really understood what it was like you know, to, to be uncertain, but to have faith through that uncertainty. He was asked to do something insane. This guy was asked to do something crazy, and he had no idea how it would turn out. But he trusted his leader, and it turned out pretty well for him. All right. So have you all ever heard of Abram? Anybody ever heard of Abram? Anybody? I heard yes. Before, yes. All right. All right. So Abram was a dude who lived a very, 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 very long time ago. All right. About four thousand or so years ago. Might be a little bit off. Four thousand, three thousand, something like that. So he lived in a land called Haran. Okay. And he lived there, and he was doing great. All right. He had a wife. He had a family. He had a bunch of people working on his working on his land, a bunch of people that worked for him. He was making a bunch of money, had a nice house. He was doing really, really good. All right? He was pretty he was pretty well off. I mean, he wasn't like the top of the line. He didn't have he wasn't extremely rich, but he was doing he was doing pretty good. Alright? So one day, as Adam, you know, he's just living his life, he's living his life, doing his thing. God speaks to him. Alright? I'm gonna read the verse from Genesis 12, 1. Someone read this? Got it. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country and your people, leave your father's family, go to the land I will show you. Genesis 12 1. Alright, so Abram's got all this stuff, alright, and he's doing he's doing so good, he's so happy. And one day God speaks to him. Can you imagine that God speaks to you? It's got to be the greatest thing ever. And this is what God says. He's like, Alright, leave all your stuff. Leave your country, leave your family, leave your house, and go to this place I'm going to show you. I mean, that's kind of, more than I would be kind of uncertain, have a little bit of fear, I would have a little bit of doubt. And so if you read on to, to 2, it says, this is what God said, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you. I will put a curse on anyone who calls down a curse on you. All nations on earth, all nations on earth will be blessed because of you. Alright, so what God is saying here is that Abram's going to have a huge impact on the world. Alright? His kids, his grandkids, they're all, they're going to populate the earth. Alright? And one more thing about Abram. Abram has no kids right now. No kids. So he's single, living on his house. I mean, he's not, he says he's got his wife, but he's a, he doesn't have any kids. So, and he, I don't think he really expected to have any either. But this is what God said. He said, you're going to have kids, you're going to have a bunch of them. All right, so first God shows him what he wants him to do, and then he promises him everything's going to come out of it. All right? So he's, so he's telling him what's going to happen. So what Abram did is Abram packed up all his stuff, took his wife, so his nephew, his nephew name was Lot, and he left. And he did what God said. And so he went to the land that God was talking about. And so after they arrived, they're there for a little while, and you know, they're expecting to have kids, right? Because, you know, their kids and their grandkids are all going to be the blessings of the earth. And so they get there and you know what? They haven't had any kids yet. And so they're like, huh, I'm like, God, you said, you know, you brought us out of our home, like you know, we, we kind of, we kind of want to have kids, so they're starting to get a little bit uncertain there. All right, so now we're going to read directly from Genesis 15:5. This is cool. I love this verse. All right, so picture this. All right, so one night, God takes Abraham out, Abram outside. All right, he says, "Look up at the stars." Can you imagine? So, you know, have y'all ever been out in the country and looked up at the stars? You see a lot more, right? Because there's not as much light in the city. So back then, you know, they didn't have any skyscrapers or any huge lights or anything. So imagine how many stars they could see. All right, so what is, someone read that for me? What does God say to Abram? You got it? The Lord said, Abram, outside, and said, look up at the sky, count the stars. If you do spin, you can, you can then you said to him, that is how many children you will have. This is 15 five. Alright, so what God says is go outside, look up the sky, count the stars. Have y'all ever tried to count the stars before? No. Well, it's not that many. It's the one that 
Have you ever actually counted all the stars in the sky? No. No. Right? It's pretty impossible. I've tried to count the only thing you see But it's seriously, it's impossible. Guys like guys like count count the stars. And God knows that Abram's not really gonna be able to count the stars. So what he's saying is that his descendants will be countless. He's gonna turn them into a great nation. And you can imagine, Abram's like, that's an awesome thing. Abram's super excited, but he still does not have a kid. So in between, right after this, God actually changes Abram's name. He changes Abram's name to, anyone know what he changed his name to? What? Abraham. Abraham. He changes his name to Abraham. He changed his wife's name to Sarah. All right, so that's key. So their names are changed, all right? They went out of their land and went to the new land, so that's their new name. That's their new identity. All right, so more time passed. Still no kids. So then the Lord appears to Abraham with two travelers, right? And that's that's the next verse that's going to be up here. So this is so God appears to Abraham with these two travelers, and this is what he says to him. You can be sure that I will return to you about the same time next year. Your wife, Sarah, will have a son. Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent behind him. All right, so finally, God's like, all right, you're going to have a son. You're going to have someone, you know, to carry on this, carry on this dream, carry on this promise that I've, that I've given to you. So Abraham's finally like, yes, I'm finally about to see the fruit of this. So even, and also this, this is huge. So Abraham and Sarah were about as old as, imagine if your great, great, great grandparents were alive. Do any of you have any great, great, great grandparents alive? No? Yeah, I don't, I don't either. So, you know, and once, you know, once people start getting ages of like, you know, up to 50, 60, 70, they can't have kids anymore, right? Well, so God's saying that, all right, even though you're the age of a great, great, great grandparent, you're going to have a kid. And so Sarah, Abraham's wife, is like, she actually laughs. She's like, what? And this, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, could y'all imagine, could y'all imagine your grandmother having a kid? No, right? Well, imagine your great, great, great grandmother having a kid. I know, so it, was, so it, it was crazy, but Abraham still kept the faith. Abraham was like, I've gone this far. I've kept following God's steps, just like in that experiment. And it's going to work out how God wants it to. And he kept the faith. So after countless years of putting faith in God, he's finally about to see the fruit of that. So they did. They had a son. You ever know what his name was? Isaac, yes. The name Isaac actually means laughter. Anyone know why his laughter? Because Sarah laughed. Because Sarah laughed, yes. Exactly. Because it was something so crazy, so amazing, something that only God could do. But Abraham had faith in God, and that's and that's why it happened. So it would have been easy for Abraham Abraham to give up, right? I mean, think about how many times in our life do we just want to give up? We just want to say, you know, this this doesn't make any sense, God. This isn't making me any better. You know, I'm, I'm tired of this. You know, but God's doing something. He's doing something in our life. He has a plan. But if halfway through our plan, we're His plan, we're like, God, I don't want to do this. I mean, we have to follow out what God wants us to do. We have to have the faith, just like Abraham did. All right. So trusting God in uncertain times is not easy. You know, it's, it's easy to trust God when everything's going great. But you know, when a family member dies, you know. Or something bad happens at school, or something bad happens at sports, or just something bad happens in the world. You lose a friend, you get in a fight, something bad happens. It's hard, it's hard to trust God. When we are stepping on ground that is unknown, it feels like we've been abandoned. Don't you think Abraham felt that sometimes? He just he left his land, and he didn't have any kids yet. I think he felt abandoned. But God was always still with him. We don't always feel God's presence, and it can be easy to lean into our own understanding. But Abraham, Abraham trusted God. And that's what we have to do. We have to, we have to try to reflect that in our lives. And the crazy thing is, thousands of years later, so you're going to talk about Abraham, his nation, all his descendants were blessed the earth, right? Y'all know who a descendant of Abraham was? Oh. 
So Abraham's you know, great, 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 great grandson was Joseph, Jesus' dad, and Jesus was, and that Joseph was Jesus' earthly dad. So God even had a plan then that would affect it all. That would affect all of us. So God's plan with Abraham affects us all today because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. We can all live in His salvation, live in His truth. So realize that, that God's plan is God's plan is huge and it's perfect. We have we have to walk it out. All the nations on the earth were blessed because of what happened with Abraham. All right. So what I want y'all to think of today, we're about to go into worship. So I'm going to leave worship today. I want y'all to think about this. What do you what do you think your leaders know that you don't? Okay. I got that. What what do you think your leaders know that you don't, and how it's going to help you in the future? All right. And remember the faith that Abraham had.